Sarah sits down. So she can stand back up. Yeah. Right. I'm going to uh, call this meeting of the Virginia City Council uh, to order February 13th, 5.30 p.m. And would everyone stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic I do not have any amendments to the agenda at this moment. However, there are two possible amendments to the agenda. We don't really have to do it up front. We can do it any time during the meeting. Um, uh, a possible amendment related to the um, streetscape uh, authorization after that presentation has been made, and you'll have to decide whether you have enough information to do that, and uh, the possible selection of a senior alderman to take my former position. So we'll move on to the visitors. The first visitor we have is Fred Kenny, Executive Director of the Addison County Economic Development Corporation. Fred? Stay right here? Yep. Okay. Great. Well, good evening, and thanks for inviting me here tonight. Um, I am Fred Kenny, the new Executive Director of the Addison County Economic Development Corporation. Um, for those of you who don't know, the mission of ACEDC is to be the resource for um, navigating the challenges and opportunities of doing business in Addison County and Vermont. Um, our approach generally is to um, uh, seeks to grow the economy from within. So we focus a lot on um, retention and expansion and growing entrepreneurship. Um, we, gen we focus on all types of uh, value add uh, manufacturing. Uh, technology companies, professional and business services, the trades, um, value-add agriculture, and forest products. We don't focus so much on retail and tourism. Um, we are one of 12 regional development corporations in Vermont. Uh, we're a 501c6, and we get our funding from the state primarily, a grant from the state, plus um, donations, uh, dues from member businesses and municipalities, thank you very much, you're one of them, and um, fees for some fees for service, uh, like loan fees. Um, our uh, primary activities are one-on-one um, -on -one relationships with businesses um, and uh, try to understand what they need and then connect them to the right resources that they need that might be ours or the Small Business Development Center or some resources at the state. Uh, but we try to figure out what it is they need, what's, what their issue is, and, and connect them with the right resource. We also hold educational workshops uh, for businesses. And uh, another role that we play is leadership and collaboration in the region uh, to impact economic development. So there's a lot of cooperation and collaboration with other organization group and groups in the region, like the Chamber, like the uh, Downtown Partnerships, um, uh, the Regional Planning Commission and a lot of other organizations that we work with uh, to, to work on po issues, policy, and try to make an impact on economic development in the region. Um, one of the things that we do uh, directly for businesses is um, lending. We have five revolving loan funds um, of various amounts and for various purposes, but uh, they're there to help um, to, to lend um, to companies. We've that went about $2 million to about 37 projects all around the county. And um, there, it's usually in a um, subordinate position to a commercial lender and, use, and some other lending institution like Vita or some uh, alternate lending uh, organization. So we're not the lead lender usually in a project, but it's to close the deal, to close the gap and make a, make a project happen. Um, so that's, I just wanted to introduce myself, let you know that we're here and uh, that I'm the new director and want to take a lot of your time. I know you have a busy schedule tonight, but if you have any questions, I'd be happy to address them. When I am meeting with your, the uh, ex, uh, Economic Development Committee of the Downtown Partnership next week to uh, talk about collaborating and what projects are in the, in the works. 
Anybody have any questions of Fred? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you all. Thanks, Fred. Thanks. Okay, the next one we have is um, John Strop. Is, is that? You got it. Do I pronounce it right? Stroop? That's right. Straup. Okay. Straup. 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 Okay. <laughs> and you got Ken it. Sullivan yep. from the um, school district. Yes. Okay. You're up. Yes, um, Mark Koenig could also do this as well, but uh, we're helping him out with the multiple roles, many roles that he has. So we really didn't talk, but I think the way um, that we would do this is I would kind of lay out the story, and Ken's really here um, to, to talk about any details and answer any questions about specific things that are going on. But we are going to bring forward um, a bond to the voters on March 6th for $7.6 million dollars. The bond's going to cover um, a number of things that go on in all four schools. The reason why we're bringing this forward is because, <coughs> simply stated, this, some of parts of the school system are unsuitable. They are not functioning appropriately. We're losing class time. Um, we've, lost, we've had multi, uh, um, many times when we've had damage to the school because of these faulty systems that Ken can go into great detail about. and they. Uh, pictures, you can go online and take a look at them and really see the, 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 uh, the poor shape that they're in. Um, in addition to this, this is also an opportunity for us to think about some, um, some aspects of the schools that um, could be upgraded on a kind of a 20-year time scale. So we are going to use this opportunity for some efficiency upgrades, um, specifically the lighting is one in, um, in the schools. And we're also going to use this opportunity to think uh, more carefully about security. So we're interested in making the, the school's condition safer, more efficient, and um, to, to simply much better for students and uh, to learn and teachers to teach. So um, the bond will go out if it passes, which we hope it will. Um, the work will be done this summer. Um, it will be done by EEI. Um, I need to look it up. It's if it, Energy Efficient Investments. They're from New Hampshire. And um, the last thing that I would like uh, to, to talk about, and one of the compelling reasons for this, is we've had a bond that is going to retire. And with that bond retiring and the energy savings, we see, energy, we see cost savings over the life of this bond. And um, we want to make sure that you and the voters know that this is um, budget neutral. And in fact, we expect it to be a benefit to our budget decreasing costs. Um, so I don't know that I, I mean, I'm John Straub. I'm from Virgins here. And I'll be glad to take some questions. Mark certainly can as well. Um, and Ken is the expert on, um, on the things that are going on in the school. Is there anything that, that I missed? No one. I'm sure there's some questions, but uh, anybody have any questions about yes. <laughs> yeah, so in addition to the lighting enhancements or replacements, are there any other green initiatives that will be taking place um, at the same time over the course of the summer if the bond is passed? So, is. Solar, mm -hmm. wind, thermal. Yeah, there is. And I'm not sure if, any, if anyone has yet gone on to the website at the Addison Northwest School District, but there is a list of links to go to. Um, we've produced a video which is actually really helpful to any questions you might have and you just click on it. It'll give you a um, 15 minute or so. Some, you know, it'll summarize the whole project um, and some of the reasons for it. But yeah, there is a solar for the rooftop of the high school yeah. proposed. Um, there's about 30,000 square foot that was replaced three years ago. Um, so that's the roof we would be working with simply because it is the best roof that we have. And so um, it's the youngest. The rest of the roofs are um, you know, nearing some refurbishment or, or life expectancy. So um, those are the roofs that we're talking about for solar. Uh, nowhere else in the district though. Um, a lot of the energy efficiency stuff and I believe there's two hundred thousand plus dollars a year. I know there is mm -hmm. um, of guaranteed savings by EEI for this project. We're hoping that that's on the the small side. They're guaranteeing us that. They're guaranteeing us that for more than ten years. 
as is. So <clears throat> they'll be with us for, for 10 years, this, this contractor. Um, I, I, I just have to ask, what is the energy bill <coughs> for the schools? Because that sounds like an enormous <laughs> amount of energy saving. Well, that's for all four schools, yeah. And so the energy um, bills for the schools are, are pretty, pretty high. Um, electricity, lighting. So that is going to convert all of the lighting to LED. Um, but an average, you know, um, an average bill for like the high school, is that what you're asking? Is like how much the monthly bills are? For well, the annual bill would be better, but monthly I'll take that. Well, yeah. It's so $200,000 in savings, in savings. Per, overall per year. Per year. Per year. Yep. Yep. And so if you go on, if you do go online, there's a link to EEI's performance grade or in investment grade audit that investment grade audit has all of the information that you're looking for page by page it tells you what they're what they're saying you know they what they've uh, read on the transformers what they've read on the motors the lighting that kind of stuff and then what the proposed savings are so they're guaranteeing that savings there are other things as well with the steam system that save us uh, quite a bit since we are running uh, 19, six, or 60 year old 1958 steam piping. Oh, I know about that. So <laughs> that, might help, that might help some of the savings. Yeah, that's probably most. <laughs> and it isn't just the LED lights, it's also right. the lights are going to be dimmable, they're motion sensors, so that they'll go on and off. As the sun comes into the windows, the lights will go down or off, so there's savings in that capacity as well. Mm, that's right, yeah. Smart control um, lights. And one more question, if you don't mind, Randy. Mm -hmm. uh, John, you mentioned security enhancements at the school. Is that baked in, or is that something that's still being discussed? It's it's a part of the proposal, and it will go through. Um, uh, some of those um, security enhancements have to do with classrooms themselves, and others have to do with uh, the front building and um, entryways and things like that. It's so, I mean, if I've gone. I go around to a lot of the schools around the state, and it's just these are some upgrades that we're, we're ready to do, and those are things that we expect to last for for into twenty years. Yeah, I'd like to add that um, this is probably unique to a lot of these projects, but on the website, on the Addison Northwest website, there is a spreadsheet that lists exactly all of these projects line for line it actually is puts a number <laughs> beside it which is is rare because this is this is us being very transparent as a school district to say this is the the, the company eei um, has given us these numbers now these numbers are going to be fine-tuned if this gets voted in but these are the numbers that we're working with and the projects and the line items for each project and there's security yes there's lighting retrofitting conversion of steam to hot water to high school adding um, control system building control systems to Virgins elementary school um, upgrading ventilation in the Virgins elementary school providing some air conditioning to the Virgins elementary school for the 50 week classrooms which are the the, the classrooms that are used for the summer for uh, thunder care and um, fusion programs it gets really hot in there for the little kids and um, it one thing I've learned since July 1st when I started is that I, I never realized how much these schools were used now in comparison to what they were 25 years ago um, the the enrollment has declined but the occupancy has increased there's two you know there's a seventh grade basketball team for middle schoolers and you know there's an eighth grade basketball team <coughs> girls boys it used to be there was a seventh and eighth grade basketball team <laughs> and there was one of each and so everything has just gone crazy and i don't want to say crazy it's great for our kids but it is definitely taking a toll on the staff the operations and maintenance staff the the um you know custodians the building itself is being used from six o'clock in the morning literally to ten o'clock at night and that's a that's a big big chunk of the day in the year 
uh, that our buildings are being used. And that's just about every school, even the grade schools. Um, there's volleyball at night, basketball at night in them, you know, meetings. So um, all this stuff is, uh, say, vital to efficiency and comfort. But there's nothing more, uh, no fat, other than security, which is something that we've all decided as a district and school board that is uh, vital to today for today because of uh, the things that are happening around us and um, the fact that we don't have any. So we're going to finally have some, uh, and we really don't have any. So this is a this is very new for the district. Well, along with the that kind of security as well, so just safety and the fact that the, element, the Bridgeton Elementary School is going to get a sprinkler system and some of the kitchens are going to get fire suppression systems that really are supposed to be to code that aren't there right now. So it seemed like while this is going in, if things are going to be ripped up and built, let's do that work while it's everything's open as opposed to a year later coming back and say, well, now we'd like to do this right. project. Sure. Yep. That's, that's a great point, especially when the ceilings are out for lighting. Mm -hmm. And the wiring for the security systems and such go in. Um, door alarms. We're not getting crazy on on cameras every single place in the you know school. We're trying to be very comprehensive, but yet um, frugal about how we're doing that and logical. We're going to have door alarms that if a door's left open for two minutes, that that will send a signal to us to tell us, hey, you got a door open. It's blocked open with a wedge or a rock. Um, that's something that we don't have, but we won't have cameras in every room, and it's against a lot to have them in a lot of, in classrooms anyway. So um, we'll be taking this, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not sure the word, but we're, we're trying to do this in a practical way, in something that's viable, and not just a ridiculous carte blanche kind of, you know, alarm on every window and that kind of thing. That's probably not going to happen. Um, that's not going to happen. It's we're going to try to utilize internal building controls to help us prevent freeze-ups rather than a window sensor that says the window's open. We'll still rely on the human aspect there, which sometimes falls off. <laughs> John, I was wondering, what is, are you anticipating closing any of the school buildings? And if so, are you putting money into any of those schools now with this bond? Um, so the first question is no, no, there's no, uh, there's no anticipation of any uh, schools closing. And uh, the answer uh, two is that all the schools will benefit. Any other questions? Thank you, that was very informative. Thank you. Thanks, we'll be back to talk about the budget that we put forward as well. So um, at another time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, hey, please do check out the website. There's a, the video is great. It's very simple and really clear. And there's tons of information there for you. Thank and you. And that spreadsheet is um, it's really lays it out there. Thank By you. the way, those who have already talked to us, done a presentation, feel free to Get up and leave. It's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for your time. Thank you. I think I might wait for the next speaker. <laughs> I think you better. <laughs> okay, so we have the two Sarahs coming up here. Sarah Stroop and, and Sarah Cowan. Uh, we have it on there. Oh, yeah. Okay. Good. We have it as. Oh, you don't have that. Wait, you've got color copies? copies. I have color copies. So we have this as, as St. Paul's Church Streetscape Project. If, if this project moves forward, I think we need to change it for grant purposes to Park Street Streetscape Project. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. We can listen to that. Yeah, that okay. sounds great. Um, yeah. Copy? Copies are coming around. Um, John Straup is a hard act to follow, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my best. Yeah, I know. He didn't sing his uh, request for a bond. Uh, I won't either. 
Um, so I'm going to start off with just kind of a three minute overview of what we are looking for and then um, open it up to the many questions that I imagine that you all will have. And, um, Sarah Cowan and I are part of a team of people at St. Paul's working on this, um, but most of that team is eating pancakes today at our Fat Tuesday dinner right now. Um, so thank you all for having us. Um, we are looking forward to forming a partnership with the city. Um, St. Paul's Episcopal Church, you may not know the congregation, but you definitely know the building. It is the Gothic style revival church in the middle of town um, next to the green. The church was built in 1834 and um, we really have a prime location in the center of town. Uh, the grant that we are applying for and asking for your support for uh, is part of a larger effort to redesign our outside spaces in a way that extends the public green space in Virgins and thus would better serve both our church and the Virgins community. So let me tell a little bit about the history of how we got to this ask. Um, from 2014 until 2016, uh, St. Paul's got a grant from an organization called Partnership for Sacred Places. This is a Philadelphia-based nonprofit that helps churches um, preserve their historic buildings while also better serving the communities that they're part of. In the fall of 2016, we surveyed people both within our congregation and in the Virgins community about how we could better serve all of our needs. Um, we did lots inside of the congregation in the town of Virgins. Uh, we ran an online survey that we posted on Front Porch Forum and elsewhere. And members of our uh, um, committee interviewed about 30 people around town about their uh, vision of St. Paul's and, and what we did do and what we could do. In November of 2016, building on the feedback that we received from that input, we ran um, an architectural design charrette. I did not know what that was before this. Um, maybe you do, but um, it's kind of blue sky thinking. If you could reimagine these buildings and the way that they're oriented, what else could we do with this space that would serve the needs that our community members had identified? Um, we have the results of all of these efforts in a long and detailed report uh, that was written up by our wonderful facilitator, Dave Hoen show and if you'd like a copy of that I'd be happy to email it to you. Um, coming out of that design charrette we uh, identified the priority issues and what we are starting with is our outdoor space. Um, we imagine that we can extend the green space in town to provide more spaces for both members of our congregation and members of our community to gather and enjoy this very sunny spot in the middle of town. Um, so we are asking for support from the City Council and we have already gotten help and input from the Virgins Partnership to apply for a state tr transportation grant to improve the sidewalk. This is part of a project that really has four pieces. So if you look at the picture, we start with the sidewalk, which currently is about three feet wide and actually too narrow for the plows to clear. Um, so it's not a very useful sidewalk um, and handicap access is um, basically not there. So we want to improve the sidewalk, which is on city property, to improve pedestrian and handicap access. Then we have an assessment for the cost of repairing our beautiful, but right now opaque, stained glass windows. They are plastic films that are quite cloudy. The, the windows behind them are gorgeous, um, and we have needed to repair them anyway. We are applying for historic preservation grants, and this is kind of the backdrop of the gathering space, those three stained glass windows. And then in between on that lawn, uh, we are looking to redo the green space and then re-landscape to provide gathering spaces and seating um, to to kind of extend the space that people can hang out when they're in the middle of town. In the long run, um, our building also requires, and this is kind of phase two of a long-term project, uh, redoing our front steps in front of the church. Uh, they're wooden steps that um, John Straub keeps repainting, but uh, they will crumble eventually. Um, but that's uh, kind of the, the next phase of this project. So in coming here today, our goal is to familiarize you with the project, answer any questions that you might have. Um, this is the first of several grants that we're applying for. The March 19th grant is for the state transportation grant. We're going to the Walter Surf Fund at Virgins Community Foundation for a historic preservation grant, and then on to the Vermont historic preservation grants that are uh, you apply for in October. Um, regardless of whether those come through, which fingers crossed they will, we still think it's a good idea to improve the sidewalk. Um, but we want to share with you how this fits into a bigger vision that we have. So, 
So um, what Sarah didn't mention, and, and Rennie is familiar with, and I know Mel is also familiar, one of the first things that we did and how we determined that what we thought was St. Paul's property is actually city property. Um, we, we do have a survey of the property. I brought a copy of it if anybody wants to see where those boundaries you know, are. Um, which kind of said, ooh, you know, at first we were thinking maybe in order to do some of these projects, we would, um, we would either have to go to the Diocese of Vermont to get permission to do certain things. Um, but in learning where the boundary lines are, uh, it made sense to try to work both with the boundaries from the church side as well as the city side and, and work on a collaborative project that way. Um, so some of what you see in the third page of that, um, the, the city portion of it comes right up to the boundary but doesn't cross over um, onto church property, if you will. Um, the, we've had other conversations about other things that maybe long term we would plan. We, we've talked about both before we, got, we, we went and, and spoke to the partnership. Uh, we, uh, it was something that we identified early on that the city is lacking public restrooms. And this is something that we've, uh, we've certainly not made any decisions on, but it's something that we would like to explore, perhaps in phase two or three or four of what we would like to do long term. Um, you know, a good example is for Gen State, people will ask to use the, the bathroom in our parish hall. Um, it's not a very um, adequate facility, but we, we will, you know, offer it when we can, but that's the type of thing that we may in future fra um, phases try to do. Um, there's also a sketch on the side of this on the city hall side where we share the driveway with the city. Um, for handicap accessibility into the church. We explored a couple of options. We don't have good handicap accessibility right now. Um, we talked about lifts, we talked about ramps. Um, when we met with Norm LaBeouf, he pointed a few things out that just, you know, when you're looking at something two-dimensionally, it looks one way, but he brought us into three dimensions and um, it made it very apparent that um, wouldn't necessarily be able to do some things and wouldn't want to do some things um, to, to create that handicap ramp into the church. So we may, um, phase three or four, or whenever we can find the funding for it, um, look to enhance the handicap accessibility into the sanctuary of the church itself. Um, Sarah mentioned a number of grants that we're looking at. There are other opportunities. Um, the stained glass windows, we know they're going to cost around $20,000 each. Um, there are three facing the green. These would be the ones that we would start with. They're actually in the worst shape. Um, the pictures that you have, if you look at the, the, the picture of the church, uh, the front page of that, you can see that opaqueness. The second page, though, will show you what the windows look like from the inside. And so we're hoping to be able to get that type of a view. So people just looking at the church will see that those beautiful stained glass windows. Um, so that's part of the project. Um, I don't know what else to add, but... Well, I'll make a couple of comments because the uh, uh, partnership, uh, Jen's partnership, has been talking with the church actually for quite a while to see whether there was some possibility that uh, some things could be done. Um, to clarify that uh, the streetscape project is totally on city property. Right. It's a city grant. But w what we thought would be practical is that if they're going to do work, if we collaborate and kind of coordinate that so that those, that work can be done maybe together um, so that it saves money for everybody in, in doing it. And uh, the good part about the project is that um, it, it really it essentially expands the city green because that's intended to be then public use right. property, not just church property. 
Um, and there certainly is work that needs to be done uh, there uh, with, the, with the sidewalk to, uh, to make the sidewalk uh, handicap accessible. And uh, what's good for this particular kind of grant is um, if we show that more investment is coming because of the public investment, then that enhances the uh, possibilities that the city could get the grant. Now, why they're here so early, because the grant, if we go for a streetscape uh, grant, it would be in the middle of March, I believe, that it is the deadline, is because it's likely that the partnership um, will actually write the grant on behalf of the city. And since um, I'm going away soon, <laughs> I wanted it to come in here to see whether it was going to be a project so that there would be adequate time for Amy and I to write the grant. So that's why they're here earlier than probably they really need to. But um, if, if it's going to be a project for this year, not necessarily building this year, but going for the grant this year, then it has to be uh, uh, submitted by the middle of March. And if it isn't, then it waits for a whole another year before anything happens. So um, that's why it's here in front of you to look at. And I didn't put anything on the agenda um, uh, specifically on this because I didn't know because you got it so quickly and uh, you know whether you had enough information to really do anything on, on this meeting or wait to uh, another meeting, the next meeting or, wh or whenever. But, if there's going to be something done this year, we can't wait too long because of the deadlines for the uh, transportation fund. I'm curious to know what the price tag is on phase one and what is the amount of the grant you're applying for? Yeah. Um, so the windows, the three windows um, on the west facing side are $59,000. The landscaping, um, there's a low bar and there's a high bar for what we're applying for. Um, there's a porch area that's about $25,000 right off the landing of our parish hall. And then the landscaping, um, depending on whether we have a trellis system and built benches, can be anywhere between $60,000 and $100,000. So that's a lot of money, right? Um, the Walter Surf uh, Fund is a maximum of $25,000 uh, with matching. Um, we think that actually it's possible that the transportation grant might count as the matching. Um, we are a small congregation and we're willing to mobilize um, resources for this. But uh, yeah, this is, um, we're not going to come up with this money on our own. Um, we also uh, think that the Historic Preservation Grant, um, which which requires matching funds as well, um, will get us pretty close. That will help on the windows. Yeah. That's the, the, the windows qualify for that. Um, and there are also other resources within the diocese that yeah. we haven't um, completely explored, but there are grants and loans available through the diocese as well as obviously fundraising from our parish, our, um, our folks specifically. We're hoping not to dip into too much of our endowment uh, for this long term, so we're trying to leverage as many grants as we can. Um, part of the process that we went through with partners, uh, that two-year process, um, they are, uh, we were one of 10 churches throughout the state. There were five Episcopal churches and five uh, uh, congregational churches within Vermont that participated in this process. Partners has worked uh, with other um, uh, churches in Vermont. They're, they have great connections with the historic preservation folks um, and both on a national and on a state level. So. Uh, they're part of the what we learned and, and what they did with us was a lot of coaching on on how to do things like reach out to community uh, resources as well as for grant and fundraising and I will add um, one of the nice things about improving our space for public use is that we imagine that part of this might be a public campaign. You know, if we need to buy benches and planters and things like that, you can buy a brick and have it on the walkway. And um, that also helps with us increasing our visibility in the community and, and serving the community. 
So we really want the space to be open to the community. Mm -hmm. I mean, right now it's not very inviting. There's, a, there's an ugly retaining wall. Um, there's really nothing that would invite anybody. The whole idea of having a stairway leading up into the space and having the benches and probably a little bit of, you know, welcome to or type of signage that we can promote people to encourage people to come in and use the space. I mean, it's, it's, um, we're just an extension of the green. It's the way we look at it. The, um, w what you received in your second packet um, is... City Council members um, uh, has an estimate of what the the city portion would be, and that would be uh, the total project is estimated at ninety two thousand five hundred dollars, um, and um, with the transportation fund, uh, it funds uh, fifty percent, um, and uh, the other fifty percent typically. Uh, with the other projects that we've had is um, 25, even though the city may upfront the money, it's typically been 25% paid by the city and 25% paid by the property owner to, to cover the cost of, of doing the project. There's been no discussion about how that has worked out because right now we don't have a project yet, um, but that's what it's estimated to cost. So one, uh, there's a lot of pieces to this, uh, and let me try to just quickly go over them. Sarah, Sarah and I have had a, a few email exchanges here. So uh, first off, let me just talk about the trees. Uh, there, there are two very large maple trees that you can uh, barely see on this plan, but they're in, they're in the sure in the it's sidewalk. Here. We've got it up here. Oh, so up one here. of the oh you got it oh you sure. got it up there. So well, yeah. you don't have the trees up yeah. there. So here, here, are, here, are, here, here are the trees. Two large trees right here. Right here. And, uh, those trees would have to be removed under this project, and uh, as they are within the, according to Tim's survey, they're within the street right away, and therefore they are considered public shade trees. And to remove those trees, because based on on my inspection, they aren't diseased or dangerous. They're they're healthy trees, and to be able to remove those trees, I would have to have a public hearing as the tree warden, invite abutting property owners, take testimony, and 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 rule on that decision. So that's one item. Another item is that this, uh, de the development on St. Paul's property, you know, goes beyond landscaping, and landscaping is exempt. Uh, however, this is really site development, and it needs to go through the Development Review Board. Uh, because St. Paul's is a religious institution, there's a statute such that uh, they are only required to get site plan review and there it's actually limited review so like if you were a, um, a commercial enterprise wanting to do this type of project you'd be subject to regular conditional <laughs> use review site plan review but because it's a religious institution there is a limitation of review the uh, uh, so on the on the on that landscaping along Park Park Street and the uh, the handicap ramp in the driveway area is a roofed structure, and because it's roofed structure, it also needs to be a part of that application to the DRB. <laughs> the stair project that you see on the front of the building, as you can see, it's within the street right away. And we typically handle those types of things with a license agreement. Um, for instance, Small City Market has some uh, gas tanks and retaining walls and such that are within the city right away. And when we run into new development, they don't all have them, folks, but any time we, anytime that there's new development occurring within the city right away, we accommodate that through a, uh, a license agreement. Uh, the next item Rennie's talked about, uh, you know, this project. One of the things that uh, Rennie's more familiar with with the downtown program than I, and uh, I used to I used to be ahead of Amy, but she's ahead of me now relative to her knowledge of the downtown program. I really don't know. Although I'm the one that put the box around those numbers, I know that the work that is inside of this box because it is within the city right away and it's a 
sidewalk and curbing type project, no question about it. That is, that is all eligible expense under the downtown program. Whether or not uh, uh, work outside of that on space owned by the church, i.e. public space, whether or not that might be considered eligible, that would require a meeting with Gary Hathaway to see if, if whether or not any portion of that uh, is at all uh, eligible. So uh, Rennie spoke about the, about the formula. So I, the way that I see this is a couple uh, things. One is, uh, you know, I'd like to know, I think the city council needs to know, not necessarily tonight, but needs to know what is being requested. I mean, obviously the normal funding source is the water tower fund. So there needs to be a specific request uh, and allocation which uh, is a part of the grant application. So that needs to be stated and, uh, uh, and acted upon. The other uh, suggestion to, to me is if whether or not a site visit is needed by the, by the city council. If, if, if you're, I mean, I, I certainly am very familiar with it. Maybe everybody is, but if you're not, we're, we're and very if you're, open to give tours. We love to give tours. Well, it's the yeah, and and it's the it's the timing is is that uh, you know the clock is uh, you know fortunately you know Randy and Amy do uh, the lion's share of the work with these grants, but I I get dragged in on these and do a little proofreading and whatever. So I'm not I'm not all, all that important, but I know that the this is a tight given uh, Rennie uh, is going away and I'm going to be going away. I mean, this is really a tight, uh, so, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not necessarily saying let's race to a decision, uh, but, you know, my question is, is, is does St. Paul's have a specific request tonight that they're looking for action from the city council on? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yes, we, so uh, we are unpracticed at the art of uh, grants proposals, I would say. Um, this, and you all are the first that we are asking for money. So part of this is figuring out how it works. Um, we are a nonprofit and we don't have a lot of money and we are a religious institution. And so um, as I understand it, we need city council approval for um, going to ask for the grant, and we also need um, city council approval for uh, asking for an allocation from the water tower fund. And then there's a question of if it is the past formula of 50, 25, 25, um, where does that last quarter come from? Um, as a nonprofit institution, I would ask you to entertain the possibility that um, we could have. Um, if not super favorable loan conditions, um, some sort of additional accommodation from the Water Tower Fund for that additional 25%. Um, this is not money that we are asking to spend on our business, and this is not about getting more customers <laughs> in the door or more seats in our pews. Um, we are th This phase of the project, which is the sidewalk, is good for the city, whether it's good for St. Paul's or not. So I think that there's a, a case to be made for city financing for that project. We with the approval of and cooperation with St. Paul's. Um, but like uh, most churches in Vermont, the state that has the lowest church attendance rate in the 50 states, um, we are a small but pretty committed community. Um, we, yes, we have a religious mission and um, kind of a bond that unites us, but we are also members of the town of Virgins. So um, yes, I would add, I, I think we don't have a dollar amount that we're asking for tonight, but working with a partnership to work with this particular box um, we're asking for some flexibility from city council for thinking about the financing from the water tower fund and other city sources for working on that sidewalk project. I think the other part of that is the sidewalk portion is part of the rest of the project that we hope to accomplish. As Sarah said, there are other portions of this that we would anticipate doing almost simultaneously. So um, the windows being one of them. Um, and the, you know, the, the, the patio or whatever you want to call it with the seating is all part of the project. And we would be, we, we know, we understand that that's totally our responsibility, 100%. Um, and 
that's going to exceed 25% of, of anything. <clears throat> well, in, any questions from the council? Would you like to hold off any um, decisions on this to the next meeting, or do you feel confident about now? I'd like to say that I support the project. Um, I do um, appreciate your time and being here. I will just caution you that our water tower fund and our watershed funds are really two of the only uh, discretionary funding sources that we have for the entire community. Um, so I would probably be reluctant to go too, too deep um, while supporting, you know, the overall ownership. So I suspect you say that. Have we ever done a land type thing like Mm -hmm. We did, yeah, we uh, actually most of them the the twenty five percent have been on loans. Sometimes those loans are three year loans. Sometimes those loans are five year loans. No interest. Correct. <coughs> and you would work with us if we did a five year loan for you? Yes. We'd um, it's if we didn't have to do a loan, we wouldn't. But absolutely, if if it's something that we have to. If it has to be that way to make this project go forward. Um, what we're also looking, our vestry meets next Tuesday, yeah. a week from Tuesday. We can, it's not, it's a week from Tuesday. Um, and we would bring all of that to them then and, uh, and get confirmation of it. But I'm thinking just so we yeah. can get the ball rolling Absolutely. and make the motion and get the, the moan yeah. going. And if you guys happen to come up with the money some way to pay it off, all the better. But um, just at least get this started so we can get the proposal in. I, I would like to make the motion to uh, to do to authorize the, the um, authorize the Park Street uh, streetscape project, uh, which would mean at least an, an initial allocation of half of that $92,500 from the water table fund. I would like to make that motion. I'll second that. Okay, the motion has been moved and seconded. Any further discussion on this? So we're just focused on the fourth and fifth parts of the, the number spreadsheet you gave, where we're talking about concrete yeah, retaining and concrete sidewalk. Could be boxed. Right, so that's, but that's it. So of the 92.5, half of it's 46.250. And our 25% then would be 23,125? Well, I think, not. you know, I'm, I'm not sure what the motion... That's why I want to figure out what the numbers are here. Because if, uh, if the motion is, is to allocate 46,250 conditional on St. Paul's... Uh, half of that paying, being a loan. Paying, uh, ...paying half of that back on a five-year basis. If that's, the, if that's the motion, that's the motion. But, you know, I think what Sarah is, is uh, saying is can the city council do, do better than that? Uh, you know, understand? I mean, that's, that's... If you could do better than that, yeah, absolutely. That's what because she's saying. There, so. Because there are other parts of the project that are 100% borne by us, by the church. Um, so, which are outside of that box, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, in, in all fairness, Sarah, anything outside of that is not city property, so it's... So it's yeah. Understood, <laughs> understood, but we see it as, um, it's two projects, it's, 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 but, but it... Yeah, they relate. We're hoping it's going to look like one project. Yeah. So, and I don't, I don't know what the number is, but I, I understand, I think I follow the logic here is that, is that, uh, and I think it's been, I was going to ask a question, but I think it got clarified. We would not do this project unless you were doing your project. That's what I wanted to get clarified, because we can do that, we can do that project, we could do the project without you, all right? But I think that if it, what, if, uh, uh, if I understand this, I think that if we knew that you were going to do your project, all right, and and of which you would be uh, be funding 100% of with what other sources, if you're trying to view that as your share of either 
all or a portion of the 25 percent so in essence deferring the loan I think that's what she's that's, what that's she's exactly getting what at. I'm saying though yeah so so I mean I don't uh, I mean it is it, it is somewhat different than some of our other projects um, I mean the projects of the streetscape projects that we have um, it is uh, it has been to uh, get handicap accessibility for buildings which would enhance their ability to do business. Yeah. Um, and uh, this doesn't have that same character to it. Um, so it, it is one that probably we could look at as being, well, you know, the street needs work and we need to do it. Um, it, it is somewhat different than, than, the, than the usual because we're not doing this for commercial enterprises. Right. Uh, as as what uh, virtually all of our streetscape projects, I mean, some of the buildings that that have been fixed up um, to do business could not have done that unless we did the streetscape project because that's what gave them the handicap accessibility that they needed to do in order to do anything with their building. So. Uh, uh I know that we're kind of early on the agenda, but everyone's schedule gets more crowded as we move over the next four weeks. I would say for the purpose of this evening, I'm happy if we defer the decision and come up with more specific information. We do have a vestry meeting where, and they're the formal action body of our church. Um, but um, I, following Rennie's comment, I would say, um, yes, we think that you should we think that the city should approve that sidewalk, even if St. Paul's isn't there, even if it's an open field on the other side. Um, the reason for asking Norm to prepare these plans in line with uh, long conversations we've been having is because we will be on the hook for the other parts of those plans, which means we will be spending money on improvements that will benefit the public, um, that are not about improving our business or getting more kind of seats butts in pews sort of thing. This is about um, having more space for people to gather that's next to the green. So um, we are not trying to kind of dodge responsibility for contributing to this project. We're saying if the city can work on the sidewalk, we're going to be working on this other stuff. And it will serve us very well in grant applications elsewhere to say that we are working with the city on this first step to go then get other people to be part of this process for the subsequent parts. Well, I have a motion on the floor, so uh, we can either deal with the motion on the floor or it can be withdrawn and, and held off to the next meeting. What? How we suggest just a motion? Since you're not in a rush for us to do this, we have another meeting in two weeks so we could make this with more detail and and have better. But you would be able to go to your upcoming meeting saying that the city is looking favorably. <laughs> but once we have more detail, we could do it. Would be my would you suggestion. Oh, we'll drop it. Seconder. I guess I you know I'd like to I would rather see a decision made and if if they came back to the meeting and said we don't need to borrow 25% of it we have it this other way at least this way you know you have 25% from the tower fund and 25% that will let you borrow I think that's better than nothing um, and that can be changed and for the for the time that everybody's going to be gone I, I think it would be pretty difficult to put all that together at the last minute in three or four days so um, if that's what everybody wants to do I'm fine with that but I, I think that at this point we can make a decision would it be fair to say that at a minimum the city be willing to put out the 23 125 plus a matching five-year loan, but it's subject to potentially changing those numbers in two weeks, depending on what additional money or additional figures we get. It may go up if we wanted to say, well, okay, you're going to be doing this the public space, and that's going to offset this, so we'd be willing to change that. But at a, at a very least, these are the numbers that we can start working with. Is well, that, I think that that's what the motion is. That a fair statement? I think that's what the motion that's what it I mean. Is, is, yeah. is related to the, the city just doing the 23 whatever. Um, but in two weeks, we, we could raise this again and potentially change that yes, if you could. need be. Mm -hmm. You so could change it at any time. Is, is, is Lowell's motion the 25%? The, uh, the, the 20, is, it, is it 23 125? That's what my question is. All right. 
you know, we we loan we loan out money, and we we have historically loaned out money, and so I'm just trying to sort out what your. You want me to read you the motion? Mm -hmm. You can't. Well, it's been really? withdrawn, so unless uh, the second. I think it's well, the secondary. To the secondary. The Park Street Streetscape Project, with 50% of funding from the Water Tower Fund, conditioned on St. Paul's Church, will be paying back 25% on a five-year basis. So and that's the motion, so which is like still on the They're taking a five-year loan right. from the water tower and in essence, fund and if, the city's portion. Right. And there, I don't see any flexibility in that motion. I see that that's the motion. and But it can be changed. I mean, well, certainly another, another motion can be done at, an, at yeah. another a meeting. So like if you came back and said, would you, would you, would you, would you, Came back, would you increase the, uh, the city contribution yeah. and decrease the loan right. conceivably to zero? You could always come back and make that request. Right. This here would, would, would enable us to apply for the funds. Mm -hmm. and, and well, and that's what I was asking the council is are, are we in agreement that at least at a minimum these numbers make sense and subject to change? But this is. Send it with everybody else. I don't know right, why I, that's, yeah. I'm not the number numbers, not yeah. who it's going to. I just want yeah. to be more comfortable with these figures. It is somewhat different than in that it is the church, not. Well, the church. nothing that we're right. doing is on the church. Ours is all on public land. <coughs> so is there any savings, Mel? I know you have <coughs> DPW to work on other projects, but if any of this was internalized, would we potentially see any? Reduction in that number. We don't typically do uh, in this kind of a project. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. We've got the whole scope. I just, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. it's heavy construction. That's yeah. why it's so expensive because of the retaining wall primarily. Um, so, uh, since the seconder has not withdrawn, there's still a motion on the floor. You know what the motion was, Joan? Uh, can we read it? Can we just clarify the motion that St. Paul's be responsible for fifty percent of the not the total number, but 50% of the... No, they're responsible for 25% of the total of project, the not 25% of what we're handing right. out. Right. 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 And it's... So at, the way you read it, son... No. Uh, okay. Well, as long as it's clear to everybody that we know... Tower fund ...to withdraw 50% of this project, of which 25% would be repaid by their church, 25% of the total, not 25% of what's taken right. out of water tower. Okay. Right. It's a difference. Yeah. yeah, I'll call the question. Okay, so we do have a motion on the floor. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nobody opposed. So we move on. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Pancakes. <laughs> All right. Let's move on to the minutes. Um, we're dealing with the minutes of January 23rd. I'll make the motion to approve the minutes. And there's a motion. Someone second, please. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any changes to the minutes? Just one correction. First paragraph, page two. Uh, second line from the bottom. Officers have computers and clerical skills. It should just be computer and clerical skills. Exactly. Computer and clerical skills. And that was all I found. Perfect. Pretty darn good. And any, any other changes? So we're voting uh, for these minutes as a, with a minor Definitely. amendment. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we're done with the minutes. All right, citizens' comments. And the we warrant, have, warrants. Yeah, oh, ready, warrants. If anybody has any. I don't, I don't have any. I'm happy to answer Anything any questions. On the warrants? Okay. Um, citizens' comments. We have a few citizens out there. Anyone want to make any comments about anything that is not on the agenda? Okay, we'll move along. Business number five. Notice a vacancy on the city council. Um, so let me say a few things about this one. Uh, as, as everyone knows, we had a resignation of the mayor. And uh, according to our charter, 
um, the um, senior alderman slash uh, deputy mayor um, uh, takes over that responsibility and, and essentially becomes the mayor. So the vacancy that we are now dealing with is the vacancy of my seat on the city council because by the charter really, I'm, I'm, I'm now the mayor, whether I like it or not. <laughs> so, uh, um, uh, the, um, so that's what we're, we're dealing with. Um, I, would, I would say that um, I've had a little bit of a struggle on whether to keep the mayor's position that I got unexpectedly for such a long period of time. And um, I, I decided that I would because I think it would just be a lot less complex <laughs> uh, than trying to uh, change things around. Um, and uh, I do have a few things that I want to mention to the council because if, if the council feels that these things are a problem, then I might reconsider uh, whether I should be continuing in as mayor. And that is, one of the things that, that was weighing on me about um, continuing in the position is the fact that I'm going to be away a, a lot. Um, uh, in a few weeks, just after the annual meeting, I will be gone for six weeks. Um, and so that means that I will miss a couple of meetings. Um, and there are one or two other trips that are already planned and paid for that I will be away. So, um, uh, I was thinking, well, if I'm going to be away like that, uh, you know, is that, is that fair to the council? Is that fair to the citizens for me to be away uh, that amount of time? Um, I don't think it would necessarily be that bad, although it, it bothers me. But it really depends on whether it bothers you. <laughs> um, because if uh, you feel comfortable with that and there is a... Um, uh, senior alderman uh, that is appointed so that when I'm gone there is somebody who can run the meeting and take care of things. Uh, most of the time, uh, like the six weeks that I'm going to be away, I'm in full contact by computer and phone. Uh, I just am not physically here. Um, so uh, that is just the caveat, I guess, of me continuing in the, the slot as mayor or not continuing in the slot as mayor. Um, and it really is up to the council if you don't have a problem with that. Um, you don't necessarily even have to say it at this meeting. You can talk to me some other time uh, and uh, deal with it then. Freddie, I um, support you taking over the mayoral responsibilities for the balance of the term. And I appreciate your candor. I think uh, with the appointment of, a, of another senior alderman in your stead and you're a, a ability to be available to us uh, via phone and email, I think I have no concerns uh, regarding you in that role. And I appreciate your leadership over the course of next year. Okay, thank you. Um, then I, I would suggest that either in this meeting or so, certainly no later than the next meeting that you appoint a senior alderman uh, because you know that I'm going to be away um, and uh, there should be somebody obviously that needs to be here and run the meeting um, until I'm back. So you can either hold that off until the next meeting or you can do it now. We can do it at any time. Is anyone interested in that role? What are the know. meetings that you're going to, what are the dates the meetings you're going to be gone? Because we don't have very many meetings in we, March. We anyway. only have one meeting in March because Mel is going to be gone. Last I'm going Tuesday. to be gone. If so, it's the last Tuesday in March, which I think is the 27th. So I'll be here. Okay, and then uh, I will probably miss the first meeting in April, and then I'll be back. Um, so it's really more immediately two meetings, and then one meeting in July, uh, which July is kind of up in the air as to whether we have two meetings anyhow. Mm -hmm. So that might not even be a problem, because I'll be away in July, uh, for part of July. So that's the extent of it. So... So the question really is about do you wish to change the agenda and choose a senior alderman or not? If not, then that can go to the next meeting. Uh, otherwise, we deal with A. 
Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather have that taken care of so that we can deal with A at the next meeting. Yeah. I agree. So the question is, is anybody interested? You're going to start to deal with A at this meeting, just I so know. you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll uh, nominate Jeff to be uh, deputy mayor. Second. Or whatever the new title will Se be. Senior alderman. Senior yeah. alderman. Sub senior alderman. <laughs> okay, it's been moved. I guess it's Second. not a move. It's just a, um, a nomination. Mm -hmm. it, are there any nom any other nominations? Um, we I guess we can take care of this by open vote then. Um, all those in favor of that nomination. Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No opposed. You had a chance to <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, let's move on to uh, proposed amendments to zoning and subdivision regulations. Well, we need. We still need to deal with A. Vacancy. We moved you. We still are. You still have a vacancy. Have well, oh, oh, so that's right. So we still we, we still have to declare it as a vacancy. Right? It still is a vacancy. You it still have a vacancy on the city council. Yeah. So um, I included this I included this page here for you really for two reasons. One to deal with the, the senior alderman portion. The other is to deal with the vacancy. So uh, you will uh, notice that under the vacancy it says that notice of this uh, vacancy shall be posted by the legislative body in at least two public place in town in or near the town clerk's office within 10 days of the creation of the vacancy so the point is 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 sometimes I will tell you that like if some lister moves out of town and we have a vacancy you know we need to fill that vacancy Joan prepares a notice puts puts it up and and uh, and we try to find somebody to be appointed by the City Council that's not the way the law reads. The way the law reads is it's really the city council decides what this notice is going to be and tells Joan how to how to type this thing. Point being is is that no different with a, a lister that moves out of town uh, or if you have a vacancy, the uh, the city council has options. Uh, one option is to and I meant to highlight section 962. It, which says a town at a special meeting may fill a vacancy in a town office. So one option is to hold an election to fill that office. That's just one option. Uh, I can't keep from saying that we're going to be, we have an election on town meeting day and there's not one single race for any office. So if anybody's contemplating having a special meeting and having Joan except nominating petitions and think that uh, we're going to have a whole slate of people looking for this spot, I think you'd probably end up with one and your polls would be open for, for uh, uh, 10 hours uh, and there was an, another non-race. So what I, what I, what I'm, I'm, I really think that you, you, you do need to determine your process to fill this vacancy by giving uh, ad, uh, the advice to, to Joan as to how you plan. If you're not going to have election, what is the process you're going to have to fill that vacancy? So what is needed is a timeline of when, uh, so that would be included in her notice, as to uh, how a citizen would proceed to be considered uh, being appointed to this board. We just Right, and so, we did it with Lynn mm -hmm. the first time that you came in. So my suggestion would be that we announce tonight and you let people know that the council would like a letter of interest by early next week and they come and do a three to five minute discussion, talk about who they are and why they want the position at our next meeting and we go off to executive session hopefully the people who are interested do not do what I do and leave during executive session um, and then we choose and that person would hold the office until our next scheduled election which would be in August and then we could have a form next March, March. March. would March. be for March it would yeah. be the next okay yeah. be, I wasn't sure would next election or next town meeting but yeah, yeah we'll hold it to the next one and that would yeah. now you may may not want to actually fill it that quickly because you, if you fill it it ends 
at the election. Because remember now, as mayor, I'm filling the mayor's slot. My seat, which I'm almost elected to because there's no, there's no competition, is vacant. So you have it's, to wait to after town. So if you wait after. Oh, it's like after town meeting. Time. Right, because you, 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 oh, so it's really it's kind it's of two vacancies. It's yours that were vacant? Yes. So there's one, there's one vacancy now, but that vacancy but only goes to election day. Because Randy's, Randy's running, he's, right. and he's going to win. And so, right. uh, so but there's still going to be a you vacancy. and I are going to be gone on the 28th of March. 20, yes, I, I'll be gone so on the 28th of March. Do we, March. How, can we, how can we vote? Can we not vote? Or we, can we vote by uh, calling in or? Oh, to actually four people put it enough. up. Well, yeah. you, could, you could, I think you could tell Joan what you want to do, and she can do it a after the election when there's there's a vacancy because no no I, I think what Lynn means is you guys there's wouldn't four. there would only be four of us deciding who's going to fill the spot you wouldn't be here to listen to oh, oh. well you don't have to you don't you don't have to have fill to it that quickly quick. you right. don't have to right. fill right. it that quickly if you don't right. want to right. you can fill it whenever you want to I don't think there's any requirement by law well, when you fill it it says it says forthwith so which means filling it? which means yeah I mean it says to you, you are to fill, you know, the select board, you know, when a vacancy occurs in any town office, the select board forthwith by appointment and writing shall fill such vacancy. So now forthwith, you know, when you, when you look it up, it means immediate, timely, prompt, all right? Mm -hmm. And I, I think it means that you need to be doing something. You need to have a calendar uh, set of how you plan on filling that. So my question is, if you go for election and get a two-year term, the appointed person is going to have a two-year term and not a one-year term. No, no, it's always so until an election. Goes, always he until. Back to the, He's yeah. the All appointments are only until yeah. an election yeah. is had. And it and is true. What makes it a little odd is yeah. that is that we have and we do have an election, and but we're not going to end up with seven people uh, as a result of that election. Could we right. make a decision at the next meeting, but not have it become that person effective sit until March? Until after yes, yeah. town meeting day. I would think so. Well, yeah, well, maybe yeah, sure. that would that work. Is, yeah, that I'd would be, work. I would be agreeable to that. Mm -hmm. I want to yeah. be able to vote. Yeah, that'd be fine. So the real trick is what Joan has to do in very, very little time. Right, Joan? Yeah, I can stick this right up tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, you and have. That, and the, the <clears throat> shortness of time is for people interested. Yeah, oh, yeah, they I know. They have to get back to us. You said by early next well, week. Well, I mean, as long as we have like, a couple of days just to read their letters. So if we got. Like next Friday, make next mm -hmm. Friday yeah. a so, deadline. So if they yep. submitted their. Yeah, if they and submitted then I their can letter. Just email them to yeah, everybody. right. By the Friday before our next meeting. I, I think there's kind of. Plenty of time, actually. Yeah, as long I as we have a weekend time. before the meeting. Yeah, so I think it's not next Friday. I think it's the Friday after. I think you can give people. Like when you're going to do your packet. Yeah, I think that if you gave everybody until th the Thursday before the meeting, mm -hmm. okay? All right. Yeah, the letters went out with the packet. Okay, yeah, and then they would go out with a, in the mm -hmm. packet on Friday. Okay. okay. So Thursday. Yeah, that, give, that way we've got, we've actually given you a little bit. You know, I know, I know you can do this tomorrow. You just yeah. do it, all right? Yeah. But I think that we do want to give more than four days to, you know, give give some time. So you're looking for a letter of interest from them, and yeah. then and and ex be and expected to uh, be attend. expected to attend the okay. meeting on the uh, on the twenty seventh. Okay. Because yeah, tr traditionally I think we've interviewed folks that are interested and then made that decision. Okay. 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 Um, Is there an age limit to being council member? You need to be on their checklist. So you have to be a voting age. age. To, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, do you, Joan? Do you need some sort of a motion on that, or is this adequate? No, this is adequate okay. for me. To, <coughs> I, by law, I have to post it. Yeah. You're just giving me direction on time. Okay. Uh, then what we now can move to proposed amendment 
to the zoning and subdivision regulations. Yes. <laughs> so in front of you is 154 <coughs> pages of uh, the zoning regulations. It's done in track changes, so you can identify what the has been changed. Uh, uh, or you could just read Andy's article if you, if you didn't, want, <laughs> didn't want to do that. But uh, anyway. Uh, so all that you need to do this evening, you are required to hold two public hearings, the first of which uh, uh, has to be based on what the Planning Commission <laughs> has uh, sent to you. And so and that, that first hearing has to be at least 30 days. So I would... Uh, uh, you know, this isn't really a race, but I would suggest that you hold your first public hearing at that meeting in March when you're not here and you're not here on the 27th. Yeah. And, and you ha you're going to take testimony, and then you decide whether or not you wish to simply move that uh, in, in the same form to the second public hearing, or if you wish to make some changes, based on testimony heard at, at, your, at your hearing or on your own accord, uh, you can make changes. You just, uh, the way that the process works, you, you have to keep having hearings until you adopt what you proposed. You, you can't have a hearing, change it, and adopt it. You have to keep having a hearing. It's a very similar process. You know, some of you already been through it here before with other uh, plan changes or, or zoning changes. So um, so all that needs to happen tonight is it would be a motion to set the first hearing for March, I believe it's 27th, because there's 28 days in I'll February. Make 27th at, at, at 6. Do we want to do it at 6? Uh, so start, start the meeting and then stop the meeting. Oh, sorry. You can't do it at 6 because but, you haven't. Oh, yes, you can do it. I'm sorry. I got the fire department mixed up with that. So, you, yes, you're all set. Yes. Okay. Sorry. I'll make said motion. <coughs> the motion's been made. I'll second it. It's been made and seconded. Any discussion? It's not. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? We've got that one. All right. We're moving on to draft sandwich board and temporary sign policy. Uh, you Ready, excuse me? Yep. Just um, by way of transparency, item number three references Birchfield Management Company, LLC, of which I'm a... Where are you? Where? I'm sorry, am I jumping ahead? The signage? Yep. Yeah, it's in there. The oh, section on the redisplay oh, yes. banners of the Stevens yes, House? Yes, yeah. yes, okay. Mm -hmm. That's my employer. Mm -hmm. FYI. Okay. Does uh, any, anybody feel that uh, Matt has any kind of a conflict? No, okay. Um, uh, I read it over. Uh, as you you had it in your packet, and also that the the planning commission had uh, done their their tweaking of the language. I feel pretty comfortable with it, but that's up to you. I thought it looked really good. Yep. Mm -hmm. I've got some punctuation stuff and a couple of minor mm -hmm. questions. Okay. Uh, How about your questions. So it says that this uh, number one C very end needs the sign needs to be, stay in a clean and original appearance. So how do we determine? I mean, it's a two-year-old sign; it's going to get a little bit of wear and tear. But as long as it's looking nice, I'm just not sure what sniper going to look original out of the box. Yeah, that when I was drafting this, doing the first draft, I, I stole that from some other ordinance. Um, and I mean, realistically, I don't think we can actually enforce it. I, I think the intention was that you just can't have a ratty old sign out there. That right. if it's bad in bad condition, then you're going to do something about it. So I would make that call, Mark. Okay. All right. It says the uh, says the city has the right. Oh, that's good. I guess it was you. Uh, yeah, I guess it's me. <laughs> uh, and then the other question I had was. Under Stevens House, um, management company has verbally authorized the city to adopt a policy. Do we want something better than just a verbal agreement? Or which section are you on? Three. Very Worry bottom, of the Birch. second page. Second paragraph. <clears throat> Birchfield Management has verbally. That's the end of the. And then you flip the. 
go to the next page, authorize the city. I just have to keep a verbal agreement within this enough. Um, well, it, it, it uh, I, I think it's in there as kind of a courtesy because actually, um, technically by our, our ordinances, they can't have banners on that building unless we give them permission to do it. Um, so actually we don't really have to get their, uh, uh, con uh, you know, uh, agreement to it. So, um... <coughs> I just strike verbally Wait, then and just yeah, say just, take, just say just authorized uh, because I don't think we we need to I don't think we need to do that because they otherwise could not have the banner on the building. Uh, and then I just have a bunch of Oxford commas, which I don't know if anybody's seen. There was an article I think yesterday where a. Uh, Business post. got hit by a five million dollar fine because of a missing comma. <laughs> yes, where yes. there's a legal world, that means a lot. It does. <laughs> Where's your typo? Uh, so, part one, paragraph C, third line, electrified comma illuminated comma or animated. Um, Are you, I'm sorry, you're in here. one what? One three. One C. One C. Got it. Illuminated. Yeah, right here. After illuminated comma. Or comma. So illuminated comma. Yeah. We don't need a comma after object in line five, object including, but we do need one after limited to comma, municipal, and then utility poles, buildings, comma, or mailboxes. Uh, there. You know, when I, when I, when I, Okay. Plagiarize. I should pay more attention to the punctuation. Okay. Uh, no comma is needed there. Okay. We need to close the parentheses in 2A. Uh, and in addition, it could just say including but not limited <coughs> to colon. So we don't need two signs such as because that's what not limited to means. Okay. Uh, oops, page. We're going to put you on the other side of that page. I know, I got the wrong pair. This is my other one. Uh, under the chart, we have three asterisks, other. Yep. So it probably would be capital O, other. Down, below, in, down here. Yep. Yeah, in the definition. So I would yep. do parent, or, uh, yep. quotations, other. Yeah, got refers it. refers to above chart, period, capital R, rules. I don't know if we need so-called Stevens House. But that we got, you know, we actually got, that was supposed to be taken out because Cheryl Brinkman said the same thing. Okay. Um, <laughs> this property rather than his property. That was because it used to be Richard Longfellow. Uh, that's why. And I don't think we need the word controlling. Uh, LLC maintains its own Protocol. I see a lot of other. Why don't, why don't um, these are you just end, end just up handing up. that to either Joan or Mel later so that we can continue All right. with the meeting? And that's just, yep. I don't know. Yeah, we have inches and feet, so I put it into one that doesn't matter. I broke that down easier and then. Because it's all okay. in F. So right. so the, I'm going to give that to you. Sub, yep. Substantive. Yep. Okay. So. Um, if we want to proceed with this, uh, I'll need a motion to accept this uh, policy. I'll make a motion uh, to accept it as, as, amended. A, as amended. Second. It's been moved and seconded to uh, accept this policy as amended. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. All right. Audit report. Everybody's had a chance to read so the audit. So you had your audit yes. report. Do you, do, you, uh, do you have questions on the audit? So I will tell you that I, uh, as has been done in the past, I met with the board of auditors, uh, Henry Broughton, Chris uh, LaPierre, and Ed Nill. Uh, this is actually Henry's 
last uh, meeting as an auditor. He is oh. um, um, letting his his term expires in March, and Jen Russell is uh, is running for that uh, post unopposed. So anyway, I met with them and give a um, maybe a half hour overview of all of the accounts. Uh, um, and so one of the things is the, I, I should note to you that the one item, and I think that Jeff and maybe somebody else overheard me talking to our auditors. And one of the things uh, that came up during our audit was the way that we handled the $60,000 loan from the continuation fund uh, for the cruisers. And I think on our end, it was all transparent. We knew what we knew what we were doing. We we're going to buy two cruisers at forty-five thousand dollars a piece, cut a check for ninety thousand dollars, pay thirty thousand out of the police department budget, pay sixty thousand dollars out of the continuation fund, and at the time we were going to repay that sixty thousand dollars from the police department budget over the next two years. Obviously, what we ended up doing was saying let's pay it back in one year and that's why there's a sixty thousand dollar line item in the police department budget because the uh, this was the our professional auditors opinion because the city council set that up as a loan uh, and not an appropriation they ended up charging the other sixty thousand dollars to the police department budget and so the hundred and fifty nine thousand dollar uh, surplus that you that I told you that you had and you all thought that you had in the eyes of the auditors turned into ninety nine thousand two hundred and fourteen dollars I uh, try, tried to kind of negotiate my way out of that because it really doesn't make any difference at the end of the day but you know the had the City Council allocated sixty thousand dollars from the continuation fund or from the tower fund for that capital purchase that's what you would have done there would have been no issues and then if you decided to pay it back you'd pay it back all right but because you set it up as a as a loan they wouldn't uh, allow the way that we handled this so the point is in is that the audit shows that our general fund fund balance was only ninety nine thousand two hundred and fourteen as opposed to if I've got my dollars right here as opposed to the 159 that will correct itself this year because we we are paying back the 60 and uh, uh, we will show the sixty thousand dollars in the budget our auditors uh, will do the reverse of what they did the previous time the previous year they they put the sixty thousand in the in the budget this year they won't recognize the sixty thousand that is that is in our current budget so it'll it'll uh, it'll just be a wash so I just want to for those of you that remember, where did that hundred and fifty-nine thousand dollars go? I thought we had. You know, that's that's where it went. It was uh, in that sixty. So, so anyway, that's that's really all I have. All the rest of the numbers uh, appear to be fine. Uh, I will tell you in the in the management letter, it it speaks about uh, the fact that we don't have a a policy of uh, changing our our passwords and uh, on a regular basis and. I, 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 at my age, I'm not. I'm, I just can't get into changing passwords. So uh, anyway, I will tell you that from a pat, just so you all know, Joan, Melissa, and I have all the same capabilities. There's. It's not like I. All of us can do everything get with everybody's files. Other's there's file. no. There's no yeah. secret anything going on at, at uh, City Hall. We do have it uh, set up so that. Uh, Jim Laro has read-only capability on the budget. There's ways for us to control uh, people's capabilities through read-only function as opposed to edit. So I, I just want to let you know I, I, won't, I won't be changing my password because uh, I, I don't want to. I want to come to work and enter my password and, and get to work. So anyway, uh, but other than that, there really isn't anything uh, uh, new in in their in their finding. So. And I will say that that um, probably after Mel retires, that I'd want to look at uh, some of the GASPI, uh, the recommendations to uh, conform with uh, the GASPI regulations. Um, 
Yeah, is it going to save the city money? Not, probably not, but I, I, at some point I think at least some of them <coughs> we should comply with um, because that leaves our audit as um, not in compliance, and I'd rather not see that. But some of these things will take some time and a little bit of money in order to change our, our books to conform to those rules. But I think we should do it in the, in the, in the future, so that Mel doesn't have to worry about it. <laughs> okay, let's move on to Addison County Regional Planning um, Transportation section. So I did get my notes back. Uh, if you remember, I left my mm -hmm. version with, uh, with Regional Planning, and Brent Rakowski was able to get it back to me. Uh -huh. And I really believe that everything that you all talked about at that meeting were are incorporated in the current proposal uh, their hearing is tomorrow night and I'll be going to the meeting but unless there's something new that you want me to bring up I'm I'm gonna just sit quietly okay that's it City on that one report. sure so uh, budget report uh, uh, I can tell you I, I do actually feel uh, pretty good it's it's funny how we really haven't been spending very much money other than salt and so even though things some of the, the departments were a little bit concerning as time goes by it's less concerning uh, Lynn we uh, I do appreciate you bringing up uh, the the, uh, the the glaring line item in the sewer department budget and let me just to tell you that uh, what happened Jim Jim Laro is a little is a little bit uh, embarrassed about what happened uh, I am too but uh, not as much as not as much as Jim that line item of seven thousand dollars for sewer line maintenance uh, uh, is really typically used for Hardigan to do cleaning of, of our lines all right and what Jim Laro does is he schedules Hardigan to come to town for a week uh, and he negotiates a week-long rate to clean a number of sewer lines, clean a number of manholes, clean a number of catch basins, clean a number of culverts. There is like a whole week's worth of work. We actually follow them around with a fire truck, so there's very little downtime. It costs $3,250 a day. We do get a discount uh, through Hardigan, and I will tell you that that they used to charge $2,650 a day, and that was the number that Jim had in his head, that it was five days at $2,650, split 50% out of, out of the sewer line, maintenance line item, and 50% out of stormwater. That's what was in his head, and off we went. So you take the $2,650, all right, times five divided by two, made sense, right? Well, the bills came in at thirty-two fifty, and and uh, Jim really charged each bill to what he really thought the bill was saying. He and I went in there and looked at every one of those bills, and each bill had some stormwater catch basin, some sewer lines, and so we went in and actually dissected all of the bills. And so they are all properly coded, and it resulted in moving about fifteen hundred dollars out of that line item because I think it was fourteen grand before. And now it's twelve and some change. So it moved it a little bit, but uh, you know, not a lot. I will tell you that when you look at the sewer budget, there's it's actually in pretty good shape. You look, you wonder like, where are we going to get the money? What, what, you know, who, how are we going to offset that? But if you look at things like electricity treatment chemicals, uh, supplies, there's really a number of line items in there that are in, uh, are in pretty good shape. So I'm not, uh, I'm, I was, I feel better today than I did two weeks ago when you, when you, uh, when you brought that up. So, uh, so did the, um, did the little letter about not putting certain things down the toilets, did that get put in the sewer bills this time? This time? Oh, no. The last billing when it went out, they were in. Oh, okay. Not this time, yeah. yeah okay. The October. Yeah. <clears throat> not this most recent billing, oh, but the billing before. Yeah. Michael gets them, so I, I just was oh. more of a question. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so anyway, that's that's it on budget. I don't, you know, I, I feel okay. Conference room. City conference room. room. Uh, I, 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 one of the things I do want to do because I, I really need some money to do this project, and uh, I will tell you that I've, I have been spending a little bit of money. I had RCI come in and do all of, do some demo work to that wall. The wall is ready, is ready to come down. I had the telephone company come in and uh, do some, do some cleaning. And I'm I'm trying to find some time to put together a scope of uh, a scope of work. One of the things that I, I would like you to think about, uh, because I am going to get a quote on this. I uh, I do not like the double the, the double doors uh, as you come into the hallway, and would prefer that to be commercial grade a single commercial grade glass door with glass on uh, each side of it, so that all of the you know, the, the door, the, the heat just goes through just to seal that. So that is a little bit of a different look, glass inside of the building. I, uh, I'm, I'm a little jealous when I go to the superintendent's office and I see uh, the nice glass. So I would like you, I'm going to get a quote on, on a, a 36 inch door uh, with glass on each side. Uh, we did get our state construction permit. Josh and I posed that question to him whether or not uh, there was any occupancy issues with that. There's no issues with that, but I just want the city council to consider that. And then, if I get some more financial information for you, I'll bring it back to the board for consideration. Because obviously, at some point, I can't do this project out of out of maintenance, and I'm going to need some allocation. But I I'm going to try to get you something. Uh, much more definitive but please be thinking about that the next time you come to city hall as to whether or not you would support that uh idea Mel, before we move sure. on do we have a thought as to who's going to pick up that work you know there's a number of i have a number of contractors that okay. i what i need to do is develop a scope of work okay. so that uh and it's just really there's about 18 pieces to this thing right. and be able to give it to a number of contractors and get a and get a bid uh, on that so Fine. Uh, policy sure you know I uh, uh, I actually got about halfway through the personnel policy and our computer got disconnected to the cloud uh, and they're saving the file I really wanted to bring you something tonight all right to take with you, but uh, it didn't make it because I lost the file, and they're they're finding it as we speak, uh, and they're going to get that back. And uh, uh, there really is a quite a few changes. One of the things, Mark, that you had mentioned was that the league thought that there was some some areas that we do not have in our policy no, that we need. If the last time it was really written was 2005, there's some changes to law since then, okay All they right. would be willing to look over and say oh okay okay so if you send it down to jill <laughs> to jill her name is jill yeah. no, okay okay so i wasn't sure. to her she okay. will review it for us and okay say this is where you can tweak it or yeah okay so, so my uh you know I, i'm going to try to get this as soon as i have this thing ready i'm sending it to you all right because you know it's going to ultimately be in it would be in your next packet but i want you to have this thing uh well in advance of uh, your normal agenda packet so that you have plenty of plenty of time to uh to read that so it's 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 about 20 pages long so double space though but anyway it's still 20 pages long <laughs> any other items for that's you? it for me right <coughs> mayor's report um well obviously since i haven't been mayor for very long i don't have very much to report. Uh, however <laughs> uh, one uh, one thing that i will say is that uh, for the next meeting it's my intention to try and establish the city manager search committee and the process by which we should be progressing because um we're actually a little bit behind the times in, in doing that. Um, and uh, if you have any ideas or suggestions uh, about either people who should serve on that committee, which will probably be a mayoral appointment, um, uh, let me know uh, so that I can try and incorporate that in what you get next week to start this ball rolling. So that's all I have with my report. And I guess we're ready for adjournment. I'll make a motion to adjourn. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.
Thank you.